Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived a miller who left what little he had to his three sons. A mill, his donkey, and his cat. The boys did not need an attorney. They made the division themselves. The eldest got the mill, the second received the ass, and the youngest was left nothing but the cat. He was not pleased. He told himself... My brothers may live handsomely enough, but I shall certainly die of hunger. This cat isn't even worth enough to sell. The cat heard all of this and told his master, Do not trouble yourself, master. All I ask is that you give me a bag and have a pair of boots made for me so that I might walk a bit easier. And then you shall see that you have not received so poor a portion of your father's estate as you might think. Brrr. And though the cat's master did not think much of him, he recalled how he had seen the feline play such cunning tricks in order to catch rats and mice that he thought perhaps it may not be a waste to let the cat have what he asked for. When the cat had his sack and his boots, he walked into a thicket where there were a great number of rabbits. He filled his sack with bran and thistle and stretched out in the grass. He stayed very still until a few rabbits appeared and began to rummage through his sack. One of them crawled all the way into the bag and Monsieur Puss jumped up immediately and tightened the strings. <laughs> He took him to the palace and asked to speak with the king. Puss was shown into the king's rooms. He made a low bow and said, Your Majesty, I have brought you a rabbit, which my noble lord, the master of Carabas, for that was the title that Puss had chosen for his master, has commanded me to present to you, sire, as a gift from him. The king replied, Tell your master I am pleased with his gift, and I thank him. Not long after, Puss was by himself in a field of cornstalks and opened his bag. When a few partridges ran into it, he pulled the strings and closed it. And just as he had done with the rabbit, he went to the king and gave them as a gift from his master. The king was once again pleased, and this time he ordered his servants to give him a reward. Puss continued this for several months, and each time the king was greatly pleased with his gifts. One day, when Puss knew the king would be taking air along the riverbank with his daughter, a most lovely princess, he told his master, If you do what I say, your fortune will be made. Go and bathe in the river. I will show you the spot and leave the rest to me. His master did what Puss told him without question. While he was bathing, the king passed by, and with all his might, Puss cried out, Help! Help! Help us, please! My lord, the Marquis of Carabas is drowning! The king stopped, and seeing that it was the familiar cat who so often brought him gifts, ordered his men to assist the Marquis. And while they were pulling the Marquis out of the river, Puss went to the king and told him how while his master was bathing, a group of thieves had passed by and made off with the Marquis' clothes. This was not true. Puss, being the cunning cat he was, hid his master's clothes under a large stone. The king ordered one of his footmen to fetch one of his best suits for the Lord Marquis of Carabas. Not long after, the footman returned with one of the finest suits that the Marquis of Carabas had ever seen. The Marquis was quite handsome, and in this fine attire, he commanded attention. The princess was quite taken with him, and no sooner had he smiled at her, too, 
maybe three times, she had fallen completely in love with him, and he with her. The king invited him to join their walk. Puss was delighted to see his plan working and went on ahead of them. Up the road, he came upon a few farmers who were tending to a meadow. The cat told them, Good day, you who are mowing. I tell you now, when the king passes, if you do not tell him that this land belongs to my lord Marquis of Carabas, the fields shall be cursed and never again produce a harvest. The farmers were made nervous by this, and when the king approached and asked who the meadow belonged to, they replied all at once, To my lord, Marquis of Carabas. You have good land, the king told the Marquis. Thank you, sire, he replied. This is good land with strong soil. It never fails to yield a most bountiful harvest each year. The clever cat stayed in front of his master and the king, and to everyone he met he said the same thing. And being afraid of a curse on their lands, the people agreed and told the king the land belonged to the Marquis. And the king was very pleased with this. He was quite impressed with the vast estate of the Lord Marquis of Carabas. The last place Puss came upon was a great castle, the master of which was an ogre. He was the richest ogre there had ever been, and all the lands the king had passed through actually belonged to him. Puss had learned who this ogre was and had then devised a plan. He asked to see the ogre in order to pay his respects. The ogre greeted him and told him to be seated. Puss sat across from him and said, I have been told that you have the ability to change yourself into all sorts of creatures, that you can turn yourself into a lion, an elephant, Anything you have the mind to. It is true, replied the ogre. And to satisfy your curiosity, I shall turn into a lion. Puss was terrified at the sight of a lion so close to him, and he climbed onto the great tapestry that hung on the wall and scurried all the way to the top. After a few moments, the ogre turned himself back into his natural form and Puss climbed down. I admit, I was very much frightened, he said. The ogre laughed. (laughs) But I must admit that I was also told, although I do not believe it at all, that you have the power to turn yourself into the smallest of creatures, such as a rat or a mouse. I dare say I think this is impossible. Impossible! roared the ogre. You shall see! And he turned himself into a mouse. No sooner had he done this than Puss ate him up. Meanwhile, the king's parade was just outside the castle walls. Puss could hear them crossing the bridge and ran out to meet them. Your majesty is welcome to the castle of my lord the Marquis of Carabas he said to the king, before making a swooping bow. The king was astonished. My lord Marquis, this castle belongs to you? I have seen very few things finer than this. Let us see inside, commanded the king. The king entered first, and the Marquis led the princess inside. They toured every inch of the castle, and finally the king, who had been so charmed by the Marquis, and knew his daughter was even more so, said to him, If it pleases you, and my daughter, I shall be honoured to have you as my son-in-law. The Marquis bowed and accepted this great honour, before turning to the princess and asking for her hand in marriage. She wholeheartedly accepted, and they were married that very day. 
Puss became a great lord and continued to watch over his master and mistress. He never again needed to run after mice, except for his own amusement. The End And now it's time to take a deep breath close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>